All right. Good morning, Bridge Church. How are you this morning? Woo! Are we excited about summer? Yeah. Kinda. How many students are out of school so far? Anybody? I got one, two, three. We got a few. How many is ready to, for school to be out? Woo! Okay, there we go. Oh, that was the teachers. <laughs> I thought that was the kids. That's the teachers screaming. How many teachers are ready to be out of school? Woo! <laughs> That's awesome. We are so glad that you're with us today. Um, I'm excited. My name is Pastor Rocky. I am uh, one of the pastors here, my wife and I. So it is uh, good to see you this Sunday. Uh, graduations are happening. Uh, things are happening as we move into summer. But first, before we kind of get started into this new message series, Summer at the Psalm, or Summer in the Psalms, I guess I should say, um, I just want to take a few moments and pray over our graduates, um, whether they graduated high school or maybe college, or and this has been for the last several months, but this is kind of the month and the time of the year where, where it's all kind of coming together. Uh, how many has been to graduations this week so far? We've probably been to a few, whether they're the little ones or the big ones or the even bigger ones, but uh, here's what I do know, and that is... Um, that we can send them out, and we as adults, we as mentors, we as guardians, it's our job to send them out, to pray for them, to protect them. We've done all we can do, okay? If they graduated high school or college, moms and dads, we really have done everything we can do at this point. Now all we can do is pray, okay? We can pray for them. We can send them out. We can ask that God would direct them. So if you would just do me the honor, if you graduated school, high school, maybe uh, kindergarten, and you're going into the, the big times, uh, would you stand? And what we want to do is, I'm not going to try to embarrass you, but would you just stand if you graduated? Thank you. Thank you. So what we want to do, if it's college, maybe you're going into first grade or kindergarten, what I want to do is I just want to, for us to extend our hands to these graduates, to the ones that have gone. And I know that there's some that have already gone out of town and vacations are already beginning to happen. So, But right now, can we just take a moment and just say a prayer for them? We want to send you out and ask that God would just, just be with you to give you the direction that you need. Because guess what? How many knows that they're going to need it? They're going to need some direction. They're going to need some help. So would you just extend your hand out to those that uh, are close to you, those that are around you, and let's just pray. Help me pray with him. Say, Lord, we pray that you would just give these graduates the wisdom and the direction to make the decisions on this journey uh, called life and for the journey that you've set before them and that they're beginning to partake in and, and, and to walk. We pray that you would uh, walk faithfully. Uh, in their ways or in your ways. God, help them to walk in your ways. And we ask that your word would be a light to their path. Lord, that you would give them a, a sense of your spirit over their lives, God, in amazing ways to allow things just to open up and to happen and that they may be strengthened for the new roads that you have in store for them. We ask for uh, you to open doors that need to be open. We ask that you would close the doors that need to be shut. And allow the purpose that you have placed inside of their lives to grow, to develop, and to flourish, to bring you glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Let's give our graduates a hand this morning. Thank you for your hard work, your dedication, and it makes a difference because um, I promise you, you're going to need it. You're going to need it um, when life becomes real. How many knows that adulting can be pretty hard sometimes? <laughs> it can be pretty hard. And uh, like Andy said, it, it, it can cause anxiety and stress. And, and here's what's great. Summer in the Psalms, I want to be able to give you some encouragement this summer to say, you guess what? It's summertime. It's, exciting. it's an exciting time of the year. Um, this is the time when we have graduations. Uh, my son was able to graduate this year. And I'm not even sure if he's here. He may uh, still be celebrating from graduating. It was a big deal. Uh, we got vacations. How many is ready for vacation? Anybody ready for like a, uh, like a summer vacation with maybe family or you go to a beach or, or paradise? Uh, I, I, I just got to say, I don't know five days I would be wore out yet, okay? I'm just saying. It might take me a couple months to say, okay, I'm ready to go back. 
But uh, no, we actually had this opportunity, and, and I think it was about after five days, we were ready to come back home too. It's just something about that normal, something about being this is home, this is where we're at. But sleeping in, anybody ready to do some sleeping in over the summer? Teachers, students, you get to do that. I was having the conversation outside with some of the guys. I'm like, where's ours? You know, where's the summertime for the working person, right? The person has to go out and and grind it out. It's like, but I've tried to figure out who's going to pay the bills for that three-month period, right? How many is ready to do some grilling? If you haven't already, steaks, burgers, hot dogs, maybe throw a fishing pole in the pond. Uh, Do some fun stuff this summer. But what does uh, what does the beginning of summer look like right here at the bridge? What we're going to do is obviously we're going to kick off uh, summer with this message series from the Psalms. We're going to have some hangouts immediately after service, like she said in the video. Just slow down. I feel like sometimes we just get in that rat race. Okay, church is over. Let's whew, we got to get out of here. We got to get to the next big thing or works tomorrow, schools tomorrow. We got just a few days left of school, but but we're going to have sodas, cold sodas outside when you leave. Uh, Bomb pops, I think, today. Ice cream sandwiches. Can I get an amen? You can have your dessert before your lunch, kids. It's okay. It's summertime. It's summertime. Uh, We're going to have a special connect group this summer where it's involving everyone. It's going to be six weeks long, so I encourage you to to get connected uh, for Summer at the Bridge. But why a summer series uh, in the Psalms? Why why do we want to do that? Have you ever wondered in your life, how to handle your emotions, the things that you're going through. I believe that's why God put the book of Psalms in the Bible was to encourage us that there is more to life than just the stresses, the anxieties, the frustrations, the situations that we have to go through. And the writer shares their emotions and their feelings, but also gives us ways to work through them. We need help working through some of those things in our lives. Has anybody ever been to the point in your life where you're like, I'm just done, I'm over it, I can't take no more, I'm just finished? That's why Psalms is there, to sing those Psalms, to to read those words. And they can be read in any order. They're not in a specific order. I know they're chaptered and, and labeled and scriptured in order. They can even be taught out of order. For you guys that are OCD and you gotta have everything in perfect order, you're type A, My wife is who I'm talking about. If you're that person, it's okay too. We love you. But they can be taught in any order. It just doesn't matter. How does it apply to you? How does those scriptures, how do those words apply to you? The Psalms were hymnals for the Israelites' people, kind of like our songs. I I was actually just talking uh, about the song that we just sang at the end, Better is One Day in Your Courts. I was like, man, they were just saying that like yesterday. Okay, it's like 30 years old, in case you were wondering. I did not realize that. I thought we just sang that like four years ago. But that's what happens when you get older and time and the ticker starts clicking by pretty quick. But how many has ever heard the song Amazing Grace? We probably have all heard that song. Or I'll Fly Away, some of the old hymnals that, that your grandma and grandpa, great-grandma and grandpa sang. That's what these psalms were for the Israelites. They would sing these as they traveled, as they worked, as they went on. And maybe you don't know what a hymnal is, but it's a collection of those songs sung to worship God. It was a way that we worship God, just like this this morning. Some of those songs were new. Some of them were a little bit older, but it didn't matter. It was about what we do with the song, and we worship God through that. That's where we get our our, our, our vision, our strength, our everything. Now we have playlists. How many's got Spotify iTunes, and I'm sure there's a hundred more of these, uh, Pandora, but we use that. You just type in a playlist, say, okay, I want to hear certain songs by a certain type of people, whether it's Elevation Worship or, or whatever that looks like. You can just hit it, and it'll play those songs. But the goal of each psalm, each psalm is to respond with praise to the God who created us. When I was thinking about this, uh, the songs that they were singing and how that it applied to my life. Just that last one, it speaks volumes to me, and that's kind of what this message is circled around. That's why we sang that song, but it was amazing. Better is one day than anywhere else, anywhere else, anywhere else. But the goal of this series is to help us remember that in the middle of vacation, in the middle of work on 
while your kids are on summer vacation and they're at home sleeping in and you're working. Or those kids that are at home and then after a while it's like, okay, part-time's over during the school year. You got them full-time again now. Ball games, practices, late nights, summer chaos. We live for it. We love it. But in those moments, the Psalms and take time. That's what this series is, to seek God, seek his wisdom and hopefully reflect him in every moment of every day. How many of you know that it's easier to reflect God when you walk into this, this building? When you walk into church, it's like, man, I love everybody. Everybody's perfect. We're all walking okay. You know, it's good to see you. And then when you leave and you're trying to back out of that parking spot and then you got that one person that's a little extra slow because they can't figure out how to work the car just properly and they're struggling just a little bit to get out and you're like, you know what, just come on out. It's okay. You got patience. Everything's good because we can reflect God in the church house. But then you get to the stoplight right out here at King's Highway and the car in front of you is on their phone and the light's green. Jesus is still back in the parking lot. And we're like, go, get out of my way. Er, Psalms are gone. (laughs) Jesus is still at the church. But I think about the times when I'm on vacation or I'm in a situation where I'm not in a hurry and I can uh, be relaxed. Have you ever noticed that when you're not stressed out and you don't have a place to go and you're just kind of in chill mode or you're just relaxed, Little things don't bother you the same way. You can sit there. You know what? They didn't bring my drink just in the right amount of time, but it's okay. It's vacation. We got nowhere to be. I went out on vacation. I'm the guy that's driving 45 miles an hour, okay? And I got the rubberneck syndrome. Look over here. Look over here for a little bit. That's the person that I despise around here. It's like, go, go. But I can remember a couple years ago, I had an opportunity to fulfill one of my bucket lists um, before I get too old, and I had the opportunity to go elk hunting out in the mountains of New Mexico. And when we got out there, I mean, it's like 10,000 feet elevation. I mean, we're backwards, sleeping in tents, like the old camp or uh, uh, outfitter tents is what they call them. Wood stove, cot. I mean, you know, this is the basics. No restrooms, nothing. I mean, we're in the backwoods. No cell phone service. Hallelujah. Woo. There was nothing out there but the woods, the wildlife, and God's creation, the beautiful sky. That was the moment right there. I was like, I could live right here in this moment and never leave again. That was one of those moments. It was how it made me feel and and the circumstance and the situation, the disconnection from everything else that was going on me. It's like life just went from here at speed and slowed way down. And you could stop and think and process. I didn't have to make decisions. I didn't have to go get gas in the car or or pay the bill at that moment. I had to later, but I didn't have to in that moment. I didn't have to think about it. And I was like, why can't I live right here? Or how about those summers? I'll try to make this a little bit more relative to to us. Hopefully, uh, most of us can relate to this, but how many could ever remember going to grandma's house over the summer? If you ever went to your grandmother's house, and, and when you went there, I used to go to Minnesota and stay at my grandmother and grandfather's house as a kid and would stay up there all summer. Now I had stuff to do, and there was chores um, and things that we had to do, but ultimately it was just, it was fun. We had, we had a great time. There was candy all the time. Grandma supplied popsicles like she would just go buy them by the cases and put in the freezer. You just went in and get them. And then she would yell at you because we left popsicle wrappers all over the house and the yard. But I never wanted to leave. When it was time for summer to go over and I had to go back home and go to school, I never wanted to leave. Even today, there's moments in my life where I'll be laying there and thinking, my grandparents have passed on now. But I would think, I would go back there today and relive those moments because, because of how it made me feel and the connection that I had, the love that I felt. In the Old Testament, we read that every year people traveled to Jerusalem to worship at God's temple. They didn't have the opportunities that we have today. 
Once a year, they would do that. In Psalms 84, that's where I'm going to take this uh, book of the Bible or this chapter out of the book of Psalms. And it's going to be our focus for today. If you got your Bibles, you want to turn to Psalms 84. That's where I'll be kind of reading through this entire chapter. It's a short chapter, so, um, you know, even I could get through it, so we're good. Uh, you guys can make it. But our focus in this message is told from the perspective of the traveler who, was, who had worshipped in the temple and being changed by that experience was now thinking about his journey home. That's what this chapter, that's kind of a synopsis of the entire chapter of 84. And one of the main things that we learn in the Psalms is, is why we need to come together to worship. Why? Sunday morning church, that's what our culture uses as our time to come and worship. That's just the custom that we use in this culture, just like they had their time and culture back then. And one of the main things that we learn in Psalms is why we need to come together to worship, not individually, but together. Worship in his house connects us in two ways. And the first thing is, if you want to write it down this morning, the first thing it does is it, worship connects us to him. That makes that connection. We have that connection with him. Psalms 84, one says it this way. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. I wonder how many times, and, and I'm guilty of this and have been a lot of times in my life, is, is the opportunity to be able to come into a house of worship. There's places in this world that this is not allowed. I don't want to take for granted the opportunity that I have on Sunday morning. Is, is Sunday morning sometimes tough? Yeah, especially during summer because I get to sleep in. And in, in, in our off season, it's the time to sleep in. It's time to get things done. There's some struggles. Maybe it's like, oh, man, I really need to do this or I really need to take care of that. But I don't want to take for granted how lovely the dwelling place is. And a dwelling place is a, a place to sit, a place to abide, and just a place to be. Like when I was sitting on that mountain, that was just a place to be. There was nothing else around. If I, could, if I could take away all my problems, that's what a house of worship is. That's what a dwelling place is. It's a moment for us to come in and say, you know what? I know tomorrow's gonna be here. Monday starts, school's, or, or school's about over, but school's still here, work's still here. But in this moment, I can wipe away everything else and I can focus on my heavenly father and connect with him. When you get to that destination, whether it's the vacation at the beach or maybe Holiday World or it's Grandma's house, there's something about being there versus talking to Grandma on the phone. We all lived through COVID. We knew what Zoom calls were and Facebook calls or FaceTime calls, and we seen all that stuff. The personal connection, it drove some of us, some people, it actually mentally hurt them not being connected. And we can connect with people on the phone. Or, or how about this? Instead of going to the beach on vacation this year, just take a picture and open it up and look at it and say, you know what? We went to the beach. Doesn't quite have the same effect as actually being there, does it? It takes work. It takes planning to make it to these destinations. My grandmother and grandfather lived 12 hours away, so it took a destination, a trip to, in order to get there. It wasn't the same as just talking to them on the phone, as being there. We can also start to feel that anticipation. We count down the days to when we're gonna have fun, when school's over, I guarantee you. And when does school get out, guys? Thursday, they know exactly the day, right? I mean, you didn't have to ask them. Maybe you'd have to ask me. I don't know what day it is. Ask one of the kids. They'll know. But the anticipation. And how many have ever noticed that when you're on vacation or when you're in that moment of having fun or being away, disconnected from, from everything else, and you're in that dwelling place or that vacation, does it seem like time goes twice as fast? When you're on vacation, it's like, okay, you got seven days, but it feels like it was four, hour, or, you know, four hours long, and that was it. It was over. We're already on our way back. In the same way that we can connect with God, we can come to the house of God, we can dwell in his presence, or we can pull up pictures. I know our social media team does a phenomenal job, but you could just look at pictures of the bridge or church anywhere and say, you know what, oh, that was a good, that looks really good, that looks cool. But there's something about being in the presence of God, 
being in his dwelling place, being here with other worshipers that are doing the same thing, being in the house. James 4 and 8 says this, come near to God, and what will he do? He will come near to you. Sometimes it takes effort for us to step out takes us a little bit of challenge. So why do we talk about connection so much? We're, you hear connection, connection, connect groups, connect here, connect there. Uh, you know, you get connect overload. But the reason we do that is the second thing is because connection or connecting with other believers makes a difference in our lives. That connection makes a difference. Helps us connect with other believers. Psalms 84, verse 2. We're going into verse 2. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. Anticipation. When you go on vacation, you are counting down the moments, the days in order to do that. When school's ending, you're looking for that. It yearns. It, it's like, man, I'm, I can't wait. What would it look like on Sunday mornings or Saturday morning prayer, which we had yesterday at 9 o'clock? What would it look like if we yearn like, oh, Wow. I could go. I could get something. I want to be there. I want to be a part because of what it does to me, what I get from it. In the Old Testament, the house of God, or the temple is what they called it then, and, and the temple was actually made up of three main parts. You had the holiest of holies where the presence of God actually rested, and it was in the Ark of the uh, Covenant, uh, Ark of the Covenant, and the only people that could go into the holiest of holies was the priest. And then you had the inner courts, and then you had the outer courts. And the outer courts is where the people, where the people were allowed to go and gather and connect with other believers. And you know why they went there? They would travel day and night in order to get to this place. And the reason that they did that, the reason that they did is they wanted to be as close as possible to God's presence because that was the only place that God's presence was in the Old Testament was in the holiest of holies. And then Jesus came and took that all away. And now we can enter into his presence. We can enter into his courts. We can enter into his house. We can actually have the presence of God that lives in us. We are the holiest of holies if you've got life, if you've got God in your life. So I don't want to take for granted. And being in connection with other believers also allows us to serve God as an entire body of believers, because we're all part of the same body. It tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 4 through 6, and it says, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having them gifts differ according to the grace that God has given us. Let us use them. Let us use them. We are all part of the same body of Christ. We all have different talents. We all have different skills. I don't sing, and we all know why. I sing right there on the front row, and I'm happy to do it, but they don't give me the microphone to sing because I can't sing, and that's okay. We have enough people that can sing. We have people that can do that, and maybe you, you, you don't, or, or maybe you don't even know what that talent is. Maybe you are a singer. Maybe you're a musician. Maybe you need to step out and say, okay, this is my talent. This is what God called me to do. Maybe I'm not fulfilling exactly what I have been called to use for the body. How many has ever been in a group message, on a text message? How many likes them? Okay, so I'm in the same boat as you. I don't really like group text messages, and I'm in probably 25 of them. And it's okay. I love it. And I dislike it at the same time. And we all hate group messages. So why do we create them? Because they have a purpose. They have benefits. Because everyone has everyone else's information when you're in a group text. You can figure out who you're texting, who you're with, so you know that person. And no one <laughs> would say this, but I've used this a lot. No one can say that you didn't know when they sent the group text message out, right? Right? How many of you say, oh, I didn't know that was going on. I didn't even get that text message. I didn't get that email. Okay, that's because you didn't read the text. You just glazed over it. Okay, yep, I don't need to talk to them. That's not good. But there's another benefit. You don't have to send out the same text to 22 different people. You can put them all in one group. 
and send that text. It saves us time. It saves us energy. But I wonder, could you imagine being connected to no one? No one. Say your phone had no service, but you carried it around. There was no connection. It wasn't activated. You'd had no contacts in your phone. You wouldn't know who anyone was or when they called or what they wanted or what their talents were, what their possibilities were, how they could service you, how they could help you. It would be pretty much useless. I don't want to be in the same situation. I don't want to isolate myself. I've heard people in my life growing up and even to this day, I don't need to go to church. I don't need that. I I can pray with God right at my house and I can watch... You're right, you can. But God did not create us to not be connected to other believers, to other people. This is the people, this is the support system that helps us to get through this. The circumstances, the situations in life say, you know what, I know it's tough right now, but God's got your back. He's with you. He can carry you through. He's got you in that situation. We don't have to live disconnected. And the amazing part is, is that when we pull into this dwelling place, into this house, God meets us here (laughs) in that moment. But his presence is not confined to this building. When you get to that stoplight and that person after church today is on their phone and the light's green, just say, Jesus, I pray that you just bless them beyond compare. Give them what they need, and that's focus, that they're driving a car and not messaging their friends. But his presence isn't confined to the building like it was in the Old Testament. We can't live in church 24-7. How many times in days throughout the year, or maybe weeks, do you wish you could just stay in this presence and, and disconnect and just be here and not have any worries, no struggles, no phone calls? But you can't do that. We also can't share the good news with others if we stay in the four walls of this building. And that's what we were all called to do. Every one of us was called to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share the good news of of what he did for humanity. But when we get connected to our mission and what our mission is, and then that mission is to fulfill the great commission, to share that news, to live out the purpose we've been given by his strength, not our own then the focus isn't on the building, but it's on his presence, on the presence of God, the holiest of holies, which lives right within us. So what do we get when we come into his presence? When we connect with God, his presence gives us strength. Gives us strength. I wonder today, who here just, you don't have to raise your hand, but who needs a little strength spiritual strength, mental strength, maybe physical strength. I want you to know that God can strengthen you today. In verse 5, same chapter, Psalms 84, blessed are those who strength is in you. The traveler had to pass through this desert place and in verse 6 calls the the Valley of Baca. And if you're reading through this chapter and you kind of study what Baca is, this valley, this wasn't the fun part of the trip. This was the hard part of their journey. This was the hard part of their life. It was desert. Baca means weeping, pain, heartache, suffering. Sounds like a great place to be, right? But once, once they made it through the valley, once they reached God's house, once they had reached the temple, the hardest part of the trip was worth it because they were strengthened by God in those moments for the year. The crazy thing about it is, is as soon as they got done in the temple and they headed home, guess what they had to do? They had to go right back through the same valley. That sounds depressing. It's like, I went through that thing, got through it, God strengthened me, now I'm going right back in it. Have you ever felt like you've just gone through a tough path in your life? And then 
You turn around and, and real shortly you're going right back through the same circumstance or the same situation. But here's the crazy thing about this passage and this verse of the scripture is, is they still had to go through the same valley. They were in the same circumstances, the same situation. But you know what happened? With the strength of God, their perception changed of what the valley looked like. The circumstances in their life that feel like emotional deserts. There's things that we go through that feel the same way as this desert place. It feels like we have no strength. Maybe we're thirsty, we're tired. And just making it to his courts, just making it to church may seem impossible some days. But when you push through, when you make it through and you get out of that, your perception changes the way that you look at things. Maybe it's a relationship that you're going through. Maybe it's with your kids or your spouse or a family member. Maybe it's a financial hardship or, or maybe it's just like you're getting hit with one thing after another and it feels like everything's coming down on you. And, and my wife and I have experienced this in the last actually several months of just, it feels like one thing after another, after another, after another. And I'm like, okay, God, what's going on? What's the plan? Why are we going through this? But then I, I turned to God, just like yesterday at 9 o'clock prayer, Saturday morning, third Sunday, or the third Saturday of every month, we come in here and have a prayer. But it's a moment that when I walked into this place, just like Andy said, he had anxiety. I was fighting something in my life, and I'm like, why, God? Why am I doing this? What is the circumstances? What do I need to change? But then I look at it, and I'm like, wow. I have the opportunity to come into the presence of God. I can stand in his presence, lift my hands, worship the God that saved me, the one that walks before me, the one that brings me through the valley. Maybe it's an addiction that you're struggling with. You're like, I'm tired. I'm tired of this same thing. I'm tired of doing the same, the same thing over and over. I ask God to forgive me and ask God to lay it down and then I pick it up on Monday or Tuesday. Or maybe it's shame and saying, well, you know what? I, I'm just not ever going to be good enough. This is just me. That's the valley. It's the valley that they had to walk through in the Old Testament. It's the valley that we have to walk through in the New Testament to say, I can make it. I can do it. I can push through into God's presence and win. We can connect with him when we can come to church. Sometimes I need to come to church because I need other people worshiping and praising right beside me because that strengthens me. But after I've been in his presence, something changes. That's the great thing about God. It never stays the same. I'm strengthened. My perception about my problems, my circumstances, my situations change because I have a different outlook of it. And now I can trust God to work in the situation as he sees fit. Because what it says in verse 10 of Psalms 84, better, <laughs> better is one day in his courts than a thousand elsewhere. <laughs> I wonder if that could just soak in for just a moment. Better is one day in his presence, in his courts, close to God. A thousand elsewhere can also be tra translated into anywhere else I could choose to be. I could choose to be somewhere else today. I could. It might be weird since I'm the pastor, but I could choose <laughs> to be somewhere else. You could choose to be somewhere else, but you are here. You are here for a reason, for a purpose, and that is to get closer to God. So where are you choosing to be? Once we make up our minds to make it to church, to the house of God, no matter what it takes, no matter what you're going through, and I don't know if, if this is just us or maybe you guys have experienced the same thing, but I can remember going to church. My wife and I would be in, in perfect harmony all the way through the week. Sunday morning, I don't know what happened to her. She flips a switch or something. I'm kidding. I'm probably the problem. But 
when we press through, whatever it takes, it changes our perspective because it's worth it. It's worth it. I, I, I got up yesterday morning for a prayer, even this morning, and, and I was thinking, I was like, man, you know, I, I could really mow the yard right now. I could get this taken care of. I could do this. But when I came to this building, when I came to this house, to these courts, and when I left, I didn't think about, man, I was sure wish I was mowing the yard right now because I didn't really need God in that moment. I really just needed to get my grass mowed. And God spoke to my heart, and he's like, every opportunity that you have to take it, would you take it? Would you take it? Is it something that I just take for granted? And I'm like, well, but I can pray right here on the lawnmower while I'm mowing. But there's something about being in his dwelling place, in the house, in his courts. So my question is, what are we seeking out? What, what are we choosing? Are we choosing that? And why is that choice so important? The reason that choice is so important is, is because a life of praise equals a life of strength. I want to be strong in my walk with God, and, and I get weak from time to time, and, and then I watch someone, it encourages me to stand up and say, you know what, I can do this. I got this. When I come here and I see you worship, when I see you praising God, and I feel like the weight of life is on top of me, and I see your hands go up, or you clap, or you're singing, it's like, man, this is worth it. God, you're good. God, you're awesome. But a life of praise equals a life of strength, equals a life of peace, a life of direction, a life of clarity. Spiritually, when, when we praise, it's like lifting weights. It allows us to go through the valley. Lifting, heavy lifting the parts of life, the desert places, and still have joy in those moments, still have grace, still walk in his ways. And after we're strengthened in his courts and we leave God and we leave, God doesn't just stay. When we leave this house, God doesn't just stay here. He doesn't just stay in the four walls or in the parking lot, so to speak. But he goes with us. He helps us day in and day out. Have you ever leaned on God in the middle of your week? Have you ever leaned on him in the circumstances that's out of your control? The second thing is, is his presence goes with me. His presence goes with me. I'm so thankful that God is with me every day. His presence gives me strength, but then it goes with me as well. In verse 11, it goes on, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk, whose walk is blameless. When you go out this afternoon or this morning, I want you to take a look. Don't look at it very long. Just take a gander at the sun. It's a huge ball of fire. It's close enough to warm us, but far enough away to protect us. It's the shield of the earth that we live on. Just like his presence. The sun is just like his presence. It warms us. It comforts us. It gives us what we need, but it also protects us. It protects us in our thoughts, in our hearts, in our mind. I can only run this race. I can only be the one he has designed me to be, not by my strength, not by my own talents or my own will, but I only do it through his strength and by trusting him that he's got it all in control. He's got my back. He's got your back. Verse 12 says, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Blessed is the one who trusts in you. How many knows it's hard to trust sometimes? It's hard for us to trust that God's got it because we're used to running our own life and controlling our own life. But to believe, to say that, okay, God, you got my back. You're giving me the direction. I trust you. That's relinquishing control. That's surrendering to God. God wants us to come to worship him but he also has a work for us to do. He has a calling on all of our lives, a work that his presence gives us the strength to do day in and day out. So the psalm can be summed up like this. We can talk about how great worship is, how great coming to church is, to be in his presence, to be in his courts. We also 
understand a life of praise leads to a life of strength. And the result is a life of confident trust in God no matter what. So this morning, I I wonder, what is it that you're struggling with? What is it maybe that you're dealing with that that you're like, you know what, God, I I, want to give it to you. I want to give it to you, but I don't really know how to let it go. I don't really understand what I need to do to just relinquish control. This morning, I believe it starts with one thing. And if you don't know who Jesus is, if you've never given your heart to him, I want to give you that opportunity first. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, as they turn the lights down, I wonder where you're at in your walk with God. I know that you made it here today, and maybe it was a struggle, and maybe it was tough, and and you are looking back, and and you're like, oh, I just don't want to leave because I know what i got to face when I go tomorrow, and I know what's going on in my life, and I just don't want to deal with the circumstances right now. And God's God's saying, "Just, just worship me. Let me strengthen you today. Let me have your heart. Let me have your life. So this morning, if you don't know who Jesus is, I want to give you that opportunity. And it's, it's not a complicated thing. It's not a hard thing. It's a simple prayer that we pray and ask God to, to take our heart and ask him into our lives. So this morning, if you don't know Jesus and it's your maybe your first time and you've never given your life to God and, and you're just tired, When I count to three, I just want you to slip up your hand. No one's looking around, and we're not going to come back to you or have you come up here. But but right now, between you and God, just a boldness to say, that's me. That's me. One, two, three. Would you just slip up your hand? No one's looking. This is you and God. Thank you this morning. You put your hand down. You can just say this prayer. You can say it in these words or just say it in your own. own. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of, of, of the things in my life that are not like you. Help me, God, to walk more like you, to reflect you in every day, Lord. I pray that you would come live in my heart as I give you everything this morning. Cleanse me, make me brand new, and let me live my life the best way that I know how for you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's where the journey starts, by confessing with their mouth. Now maybe you've been here and and you're walking with God and maybe you've kind of strayed away from him. You've kind of walked away from him. Your life's not really where it needs to be. Can I tell you, you can make that same surrender to him and just say, God, you know what? I've kind of gotten off center. I've kind of lost my way, lost my path. And maybe I've taken the house of God for granted and and the, the, the courts that I'm able to dwell in. And, and I'm like, ah, I just need a tweak in my life. Can I just pray a blessing over you this morning and ask that God would just minister to you and speak to your heart and let God just move on you for just a moment. God, I pray right now that you would bless every person under the sound of my voice, God, that you would just minister to their family, to their life, to their circumstance, to their situation, God. And let us take this psalm, Lord, and sing songs of joy to understand that your mercies and that your grace is forever, Lord, as long as we're on this earth. And I pray, God, that you would move us, that you would tweak things in our lives, God, to draw closer to you, to understand that it's better one day in the presence of God than anything else that we could do. And I pray that you would just minister to our lives, speak to us, give us the guidance and the direction that we need, God. And we ask all these things in the wonderful, precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we continue to pray this morning, I invite, ask you to invite God just to speak over 
your life for the next few moments as they play softly here in a moment. If you would like to reflect, we have communion set over here to my left in this corner. Maybe you just need to take a moment of recommitting to God or surrendering to Him. Our prayer partners will be over here to my left. I'll be to the right here this morning. If you need someone to pray with you, to stand with you in prayer, we'll be down here. Or you can pray at your seat. Or maybe you just want to come up to the front and pray. If you just walk up here and kneel or just stand, nobody's going to bother you. Just pray. Or maybe there's a prayer, there's prayer cards on both sides. You can write your prayer out to give to God and leave in that box in the back. But here's what I do encourage you. As you stand with me one more time this morning, I encourage you to let, to respond and let God speak to your heart this morning. Amen. Thanks for listening to today's message. We pray that it strengthened, encouraged, and empowered you. We would love to connect with you. So if you have questions, need prayer, or simply want to let us know how this message has helped you, please send an email to info at thebridgechurchmo.org. To stay up to date with all the events at The Bridge, follow us on Facebook and Instagram.